Love you, the Lord. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the privilege to be alive today. Thank you because of your mercy. Thank you because of your grace. Thank you for all the great things that you have done in our life. Thank you for because you are with us. Thank you because you are for us. 
The Bible says, if you are for us, who can be against us? Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the privilege to be alive. We worship you this morning. It's all about you, Jesus. We worship you as a church. We worship you as an individual. We thank you for the grace, for the mercy, for giving us another privilege to see the new day. is another Sunday today. Lord, we worship you. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the last week. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. No matter where you are, you listen to this broadcast. I just want you to be sensitive in your spirit. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration because he's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. If not God that have been on our side, what shall Israel say now? So give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Burst into time of praise and worship. Worship him. Worship him. He deserves it. He's our God. He's our king. The song that we come in say, Lord, I love you because you are for us. We worship you. We worship you. This is the Apostolic Church, Lona, South Africa. By the grace of God, is church for all where God is manifesting his glory. And I want to welcome every one of you to another beautiful Sunday. This Sunday is the Sunday that we are going to be refilling the uh, mind of God towards his vision of his glory for your life. So I want you to follow us on this program as we are going to the time of praise and worship as I will be reading from the Psalm, Psalm 96. I just want you to open your Bible. Let's pray together. Let's worship him together. Let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. Let's give him all, all the honor and adoration. Worship his holy name because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Worship him. Worship him. No matter where you are. Worship him, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. He deserves worship him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We love you, Jesus. We don't know why you choose to love us, but we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you very much, everyone joining us. I really appreciate every one of you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's go into the time of praise and worship as I read from the book of Psalm, Psalm 96. As I said, Psalm 96. If you are there, you can open your Bible and let's praise him. Say, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his holy name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the earth. Is wondrous among all people, for the Lord is good and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are hide of. But the Lord made heaven, honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. We are right now in his sanctuary. Say, honor and majesty have before him, strength and beauty have in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindred of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. O worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Fear before him all the earth say among the brethren that the Lord reigneth. The word also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people right justly. Let the heaven rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the zero and the fullness thereof let the field be joyful and all the all that is within then then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the lord for he come for he cometh to judge the head he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with truth this is the word of god i just want you to continue worshiping him worshiping him as i'm Praising him with a song from one of our dear sister. And it's, it's a song that you can also relate with. It's a song that we bring joy into your heart. It's the song that the Lord has put into the heart of this great woman. Let's just enjoy it and worship him with this song before we go into the service this morning. Worship him, worship him. I see the light before my heart, and that is what we will be talking about this morning as we will be ministering to you to let you understand the vision of the Lord, the glory, the vision of the glory, uh, the vision of the Lord's glory. That is what we'll be revealing. Do you see the vision of his glory in your heart? And that is the level of the faith that I want to take you to this morning. I want you to understand that there is a vision of his glory in your eyes. You need to saw it, not with your naked eye, but with your spiritual eye. Your spiritual understanding needs to be opened. And this message this morning is to encourage you and to open your spiritual understanding towards the things of God. There are so many people today that they didn't know or recognize the glory of God. They've never seen the vision. 
and they've never had opportunity to know who God is really is. And that is what we will be talking about this morning as I will be ministering to you. But before we go into the link, use this time to let you know that the Apostolic Church, London, South Africa, Pictoria Assembly, under the leadership of Pastor P.F. Ajayi, the district pastor of Rambok District, and the Apostolic Church Victoria Assembly is under the Apostolic Church Rambok Assembly and, and Rambok District. And by the grace of God, God is doing wonders in this assembly. If you are around Victoria or its neighborhood and you want to be part of what is doing in this house, uh, you can call us on the number on the screen. And at the same time, if you have a prayer request or you have a challenges in your life or there is things that you are facing that you don't know a way out of it. Speak to us. Let's pray together. We have the time of prayer. We have the time of service. Every Sunday morning, we come to your way as way of ministering to you. And also, we have our devotional service as well. But this morning, by the grace of God, God is going to speak to you in his word. God is going to manifest himself to you. But all you need to do is to open your heart to receive from God. A close eyes or a closed man's mouth is a closed destiny. If you want to see the glory of God, you need to see it for yourself. You need to understand the glory that we are talking about. And when you have an encounter, a personal encounter with God, your life can never remain the same because there is no one that encounter God that his life remain the same. And we have the Bible to back it up of what we will be ministering this morning. This is our own way of evangelizing the word of God to the four corners of the world. And if you want to be the carrier of that message as well, share this program, share this program. Through sharing this program, there is a blessing for it as well because you are also doing the work of evangelism by sharing it. So please share this program as many times as you can. Please share it, share it. That is the blessing that is there for you. This morning, we are going to be sharing the word of God with you. And by the grace of God, we are going to let you understand where our assemblies are in South Africa. The Apostolic Church is a church for all, where true message of Christ is preached. We focus on the holiness. The holiness is our standard, and we focus on the message of the cross. There. This is glorious vision, the glorious vision. The glorious vision and the, the vision that is in it is what we will be talking about this morning. And I want you to please be ready to receive from God. I want you to be ready to receive from God. Like I said earlier on, we have an assembly in Ramburg. And also, if you are around Ramburg or its neighborhood, make your way to the Apostolic Church Ramburg Assembly. You can call the number on the screen by the grace of God. We will direct you how to get there. And we also have a area headquarters in Johannesburg in Tom Fontaine, High Street. By the grace of God, God is using the field apostle. Our father in the Lord is field superintendent, Pastor G, Pastor Dr. G. O. Akintola. The Lord is using mightily. We have an assembly in Johannesburg, and also we have an assembly in Buga Assembly in uh, Pumalanga. You can call the number on the screen under the leadership of Pastor uh, Oluwadare. And also we have an assembly in Ekangala in Pumalanga as well. If you are around that area, you can make your way to that assembly to worship the Lord. Pastor Onoiga is there that the Lord is using him. Also we have an assembly in Whitbank, in Middleburg, and also a Pastor uh, 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 Pastor Jerry, Pastor John Jerry, Akiloye, God is using mightily as well. Make your way to any of the assembly. And also we have our programs online as well from the headquarters. And at the same time, if you are in Nigeria, the Apostle Church is all over everywhere in Nigeria. Make your way to any of the assembly and the Lord will bless you as you are doing so. A, we have a bigger body in Nigeria under the leadership of Pastor Igwe and Pastor E, Pastor Dr. E.S. Awojide. The Lord will bless you this morning as we will be sharing the word of God. But before we go into that, let's just open your mouth. Start giving praise. Worship him. Because if you serve it, if you serve it, worship him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Worship his holy name. Give him glory. Give him honor. Lord, this morning we just want to thank you. 
We just want to give you glory. We want to exalt you for what you have done, for what you are doing, for your promises, for your word. For because you are for us, thank you, oh Lord, we worship you this morning. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. We give you glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The spirit of gladness is upon us right now. We worship you this morning, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Praise the Lord. We worship you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hear our praise, O Lord. As we open our hearts to you. Hear our praise from the grateful heart. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to bring your proud worship offering, you can as well send it through through e-wallet or you can call the number on the screen. If you want to give your giving and your praise and worship offering. Father, we pray this morning that you forgive us all our sin. If there is any sin in us that we don't worship you enough, we don't give our substances to you enough, that we don't focus on your word enough, that we put you behind everything we are doing. We come before your throne. We ask for forgiveness, O oh Lord, that you cleanse us this morning. As to everyone that will be listening to me, you will bless them and you will meet them at the point of their knees. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Speak through us and let your word be read in our life. And bless us through your word. And this morning, let heaven open upon our people. Let there be divine visitation. Let there be divine blessing. Let everyone under the sound of my voice receive the grace to continue. Let them receive the grace to win. Let them receive the grace to be successful. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in the house, everyone on site or online. The blessings of God that make this and have no sorrow coming upon you, you will not fail. Welcome everyone to another beautiful hour in his presence. God bless you as you are connecting. God bless you as you are sharing this program. God bless you as you are commenting and God bless you as you like this program. Be part of what God is doing in this house this hour and you will see the hand of the Lord in your life. This morning I will be ministering from the book of Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6. And we'll be talking about the uh, mind of God, the mind of God, what the Lord has for you and what you need to know about the vision that God has placed ahead of your life. That is what we'll be sharing with you this morning. But before that, I want to give you a foundation of what we'll be talking about this morning, there is a man of God, there is a servant called Uzziah. Uzziah. We're going to be using him as a case study as well, but we're going to be talking about the vision of the Lord to you and to your generation. By the grace of God, God is going to bless you through this message. God is going to bless you through this message. I read, he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twins, he covered his face. And with the twin, he covered his feet, and with the twins did fly. And 
one cry unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled of his glory. I will be taking my uh, my golden verse from verse 3, from verse 3 of that chapter, from verse 3 of that chapter, and I read it again. Say, and one cry unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the law of hosts. The whole head is filled of, of his glory. The whole head is filled of the glory. The glory of God is filled the whole head. He made everything. I have a opportunity to be having a conversation with one of the uh, the sister uh, Annie Annie yesterday night, and I was telling him that He created everything for His glory. He created us, the woman being for His glory, the animal, the trees, the leaf, the everything on earth. He created them for His glory. He not created them just for them being there, but He created them for His glory because it is glory that make the life meaningful it is glory the absence of the glory of god in someone's life may be a problem or it may be distrustful if the presence of god or the glory of god is not in your life then there is a problem he said in verse 2 he said and one cry these are the angels the cherubims, the seraphims they say and one cry unto another and said Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole head is full of his glory. The whole head is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said, Hi, whoa, it's me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a, a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with a tongue from all the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched their lips, and their iniquity is taken away, and their sin popped. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who shall I who shall go for us? Then said I, Here I am. I Send me, and he said, Go and tell the people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lost their see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the city be, be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without men, and the land utterly dissolute. Verse 12. And the Lord have moved me far away and there be and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land but yet it shall be a tent and it shall be returned and shall be hidden as a tall tree and as an hawk whose substance is in them when they cast their law their lift so the holy seed shall be sustained thereof. This is the word of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. This morning, the Lord, we are going to your word. Speak to us. 
Open our inner understanding and let us speak of you alone. Speak through us and let this message go out and heal someone. And through this message, let the people find their way back to you. It's not about us, it's about you, Jesus. You are the master, the rabbi. Teach us, speak through us. I turn my tongue to the cone of fire. And I want you to speak through me, the mind of God for your people. Lord, speak through me and let your name be glorified. Glorify yourself in this service this morning. And let everyone at the sound of my voice say a louder amen. Let everyone say another amen. I welcome you once again to another beautiful hour in his presence. This is the Apostolic Church Victoria Assembly. Welcome to another beautiful time in his presence. This morning, the Lord will be speaking to you. It will be revealing his glory to you. What you need to know and what you need to understand. How his glory fill the head and what you need to do to tap into that glory. That glory needs to shine in your life. That glory needs to shine in your home. That glory needs to shine in your business. That glory needs to shine in your daily life. That glory needs to shine in your physical, spiritual, or uh, education in every area of your life. That glory needs to shine. And that is the message that Isaiah saw. He saw the vision. He said, that's the year that the king Uzziah died. I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. That is what he saw. He saw the Lord sitting on the throne. We opened his spiritual eyes. Your whole spiritual eyes need to be opened this morning. You need to see God for yourself. Not what the church is saying. Not what the pastor is saying. But what you yourself encounter and see by your own eyes. You know, when you have a personal encounter with God, you make the work of the pastor easy. There will not be a problem. You don't need to be. You don't need to be pampered before you can serve the Lord. When you have a personal relationship with God, when you have a personal encounter with God, it will make the journey of faith easy for you. Because it's not that somebody is pushing you or somebody is encouraging you or somebody is dragging your hands to come to the Lord. But you will have a clear understanding of who God is. And that will give the understanding of why you need to serve him. And that will open your eyes to the importance of your being or your worship to him. And that is the message that will be coming to you this morning. That you need to know God for yourself. You need to have a personal encounter. I saw was speaking here. He saw by himself. After the death of the king Uzziah, he said, God, open my eyes. And I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. There is no one that will have an encounter with God, seeing God for themselves, that their life will remain the same. Or they will need to be pushing them, calling them. You are not coming to the church today, brother. You have not seen your tithes today, brother. You have... No, it's because you have not had personal encounter with God. That is why all those things need to be taking place. That is why your pastor needs to call you. Your pastor needs to remind you every Sunday, don't forget the service today. It's because you have not had a personal encounter with God. That is why you see, they need to sit you down like a baby. They need to come to your house. You cry because the pastor is not visiting you. You cry because the pastor, they are not sharing the money in the church. It's because you have not had a personal encounter with God. The personal encounter, when you see the glory of God. See, Paul doesn't know that he's going to become Paul. When he was Saul, Everything about him is to persecute the people of God. Let's assume somebody went to, to Saul and preached to him. He may not listen. He may even kill them. But because he saw the glory of God by himself, the vision of the Lord's glory, when he saw it, he knows that, no, I can never be the same. This is the Lord. And see the work that he's doing. Because it's a personal encounter. There's no intermediary between him and God. And that is the level of the spirituality I'm calling you into this hour. That you need to have a personal encounter with God. You need to encounter God for yourself. When you encounter God, sin will become something that you hate completely. They don't need to be telling you sin is not good. 
your fornication is not good. A lady that is, I mean, that has not been married, that you have been sleeping with your, who you call your boyfriend, don't bother we need to be explaining all that to you. When you see the vision of God, all these things will be clear to you. You will saw it yourself and you will have it in your heart that the Lord is the only one I will serve all the days of my life. And see what happened in verse 3 of that chapter, which is the topic of the, today's service. He said, and one cry, this are the cherubims and seraphims that say, stand in the, in the front of the Lord uh, in, 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 in a sanctuary. And when he saw them, when I told, uh, when, when uh, prophet Isaiah saw them, he, he had a clear understanding. The case closed. He said, and, the, and one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy. Because you have seen the holy one of Israel. That is who I'm calling you to this morning. That is who I am introducing to you this morning. The only one of Israel. The strong man in battle. The only one that can do and undo. The only one that can remove this disgrace in your life. You are talk of time. Things is not working. Yeah, people are talking about you. You don't even know how to go out and make a living. You don't even, sometimes you don't even feel like going out because of the shame. But I have a good news to you and for you this morning that the Lord, the one that the prophet Isaiah saw in his throne and his life never remained the same. I introduced you to the same God. That's the God will meet you and remove all your shames, all your predicament, all the frustration, everything that is making you cry, every disappointment, the Lord will meet you this morning and remove them out of your life. He said to them, read on, verse 3, he said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole head is full of his glory. The whole head is full of his glory. That glory is what you need when you are going through the world. And the glory that is filled the whole world is not upon you. Because not everybody carries the glory of God. Not everyone has access to his glory. Everyone has glory. But not everyone carries the glory of God. Every woman being, everything that is done, he put his glory on them. Everything that is done, he put his glory. But there is a level of glory. Glory past glory. There is a level of glory. There is a, there are some glory that you will need to see. The vision of it when you saw it and you carry that glory. People will see you, they will know truly you are carrying the glory that supersedes just mere glory. And that is the level of the glory that I'm introducing you to you this morning as the people of God. The personal encounter of God is what that brings that glory out. That glory can never be activated until when you have a personal encounter with God. When you encounter God, when you yourself meet God one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, like Saul, when you meet him by yourself. Not that when somebody is preaching or somebody is calling you or somebody is introducing you to him. No, when you yourself have a personal encounter with him, when he, he meets you along the way in one narrow part of life, that is when you will know that the glory that we are talking about is beyond just a mere glory. That was the glory that Saul saw. He saw the glory and it was he was flabbergasted. He doesn't know where he is. And the voice coming out of the glory. And that was the voice that changed his life from Saul, the persecutor, to the Paul, the great apostle. You also, there is a glory that you carry. The message of the season is in your hand. The message of the generation is in your hand. The message that will liberate this generation is in your heart. It's in your head. But you have not had a counter. You are going through life today. You are following all the manner of things. Your life has not been changed because you have never encountered God. I am calling you to a higher call of personal relationship and personal encounter with God. That your life will not remain the same. The kind of the vision that you will saw, that you will see, that you will bring the glory of God out of you. 
that the people will know that truly God is the one calling you. Saul saw the glory and immediately that glory come upon him. He saw the vision. He saw who God is. And God turned, that turned his life around. That bring the best out of him. That bring the purpose of his life to the reality. Saul become Paul. He become a preacher. He become an apostle. He wrote a postus. He become the liberator of his generation up to today. Because there is a higher call for every woman being. I don't know whether you are now busy with some things that is not even the will of God. You are living in sin. You are living in sin. The Lord is calling you this morning. The Lord is calling you that son, come, come. I want to take you to the highest level. That was what Isaiah is talking about. Let me read verse 5. Say, then said, Verse 6 say, Then flew one of the several seraphim into me, have a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with a tongue off from the altar. You see, those are the vision that he saw. When he saw it, his, his case closed, his, his, his mind is at rest. He knows that there is a solution. He knows that this vision that I'm seeing is from God. Because he see the throne of God. You also, you need to see the throne of God. You need to access the throne of God. You need to access the highest power that your life may not remain the same. The God that I'm talking about, the glory that I'm talking about is not what you can see with your physical eyes or what you can see by you just go to church like a routine. It's not what you can see by you just been there, a a bench, a bench woman, and they, whatever they say is okay. Anything they say we should do, we will do. Whatever they tell us, that's what we are going to do. No. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. You need to surrender to him. You need to give your life to him. You need to surrender everything about you to him. You need to believe that he is the only one that can bring you out of your mess. You need to believe that he is the only one that can bring to your way that which he has promised. Because it's not a son of man that is your life. He has promised you. He has given you the life. He has shown you the way. He has called you to a marvelous glory. And that is what I am reminding you this morning. That you can do better than what you are doing right now. That you can go far beyond where you think you can go. You know, Saul never knows that he's going to become an apostle that people will be talking about him. He never knew that there is a the highest call upon his life. He never knew. All he knew is that he just don't want to see the people of God. He just doesn't want the gospel to be preached. He just wants to be an, a, 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 an hindrance to the others, not for them to hear the word of God. But when you have a personal encounter with God, a personal encounter with God, that is what turns his life around. I am calling you as well. I don't know in what shit or in what situation you are right now. And you are against the word of God. You have been kicking against the word of God. And your, the word of God has been failing in your hands. I am calling you this morning. Come out of that. Have a personal encounter with God. Be with God. Surrender your life to him. Let him use you. Let him use you. You are one of the apostles. You are one of the evangelists. You are one of the prophets. But it's not revealed. It's not been shown. His people doesn't see it in your life because you have not surrendered to him. You need to surrender to him. Surrender everything to him. Knowing fully well that you cannot go through life, just go through life anyhow. You are here better than what you are doing now. You can do more better the glory that the prophet Isaiah saw is what bring the revelation of what we are talking about today into the reality. And it's what we are enjoying, which is the salvation. The main message of this generation is salvation. The salvation of your soul is what's important. The Bible says, what can a man that he own the whole world and he loses his soul? Immediately the prophet's Isaiah saw that vision. He carried it 
and he starts moving with it because he has seen the Holy One of Israel. He said, Holy, hear those angels say, Holy, 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 the Holy One that is sitting on the throne. That is the only one that you need to sue. When you see that only that the prophet Isaiah is talking about, you yourself will know that you have me with God. You will know that you have met with God. It will make the journey of faith be easy for you. Your life will become a life that people want to come into. You will be living according to his own, his own priest, his own message, his own word. You will be living according to his own message. You will be living according to the standard of the word of God. The reason why there are so many problems in the church today is because people don't have a personal encounter. They only, they only hear what the pastor is saying to them. They don't know who they are in God. They don't know who they themselves they are. They don't have the opportunity to see the glory that the prophet Isaiah saw. They don't have opportunity that their eyes opened. See God in the throne. See the angel. See the seraphims. See the cells. See the see the seraphims. That is what I am calling you for this morning. For you yourself needs to see God for yourself. You yourself needs to understand God. You yourself needs your spiritual eyes needs to be opened. You need to see the glory of God, and that make the journey of life easy for you. I encourage you this morning that you should make it easy. be with God. Surrender yourself to him. Surrender yourself to him and trust him for your life. The journey of life will be easy when you have that opportunity, when you have that encounter, when you have the opportunity to see God for yourself, when you have opportunity to hear what God is saying. Let me read from the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. That is uh, what the, when Jesus Christ is speaking to his disciple, when he's talking about the destruction of the temple foretold. They, they, they don't have a clear understanding of what he's talking about because they are looking at the temple and that is an explanation of what I'm giving to you. When you see God, you will know the mind of God for your life and that will make the journey of God here, I mean, the journey of life easy. When you hear the word of God because of the personal encounter that you have with God, that will make it easy for you to interpret the word of God and understand the purpose of God inside that message for your life. And Jesus said unto them, Say ye not all those things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left ye one stone upon one another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Holiness, the disciple came unto him and privately said, say, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? This is the message that we are introducing for you. The message of the end time. Even the disciples, they are following him. The disciples, they are going to, they are going with him. The disciples are also go out with him daily. But they have no understanding of what he's talking about. They're clueless. They don't have an understanding of what he's talking about. Let me read verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of war and rumor of wars. Say that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the hand is not yet come. The hand is not yet come. Verse 7, for nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and they shall be famine, and pestilence, and earthquake 
in diverse place. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So if you have not having a personal encounter with God, you will not have an understanding of what he's talking about. You think the hand is here? He's telling you that that is the beginning. We need to go to the whole world and share this word to the four corners of the world. Let the people hear the word of God. Speak the word of God to people. Let them hear. Let them lead them to God. Let them have a personal encounter that will open their eyes. If everyone on earth have a personal encounter with God, the world would be a better place to stay. But because it's been written about this generation, this is the message of the end time. This is the message that you need in this time. This is the message that we open your hearts to what God is doing in this season. When the Lord opened your eyes, when He opened the eyes of Prophet Isaiah, but as I hear and saw, he saw the greatness of God. He saw the marvelous God. God. He saw the palace. He saw where God sitting there. And his life never remained the same. And that gives birth to this chapter that I'm reading now. That is where the message of the Lord Jesus Christ coming out from. And that is where the prophecy that the prophet Isaiah prophesied then years back come to reality. And in verse 10 of of, of Matthew chapter 24, verse 10, it says, And there shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. The prophet that will be telling you this course of a game. What is the religion? What is the salvation you have to do with the with the game? Who is going to win the nation's cup? Who is going to take the World Cup? Which team is going to win? Is that a prophet? What's the what? The, what is the prophet telling you? Who is going to win a game? What that have to do with the message of the salvation, the message of the truth? And you believe him because you have not having a personal encounter with God. Because God has not met you. Because you have not seen God for yourself. You believe it. Because hey, this is a good prophet. He's the one that predicts what we have. He's a predictor. He's not a prophet. He predicts what the game will be. The prophet that is giving you Lotto number. is the one that is predicting the number that is coming out from Lotto. And you call that prophet. The Bible already spoke about them. Say, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because of the iniquity shall abandon, there shall be more iniquity. Then the love of many shall wise cold. The love of many shall wise cold. And that is where I begin from. The, world, the, the love of many today in the church, the Christians today, our love for God has wise cold. Why? Because we don't have a personal encounter with God in the first place. You are not like a sword that turned to Paul. You just hear that the said that we come, we come. Now see what they are doing. Then you're tired, you leave, you're jumping from one church to the other because your love for God is wise cold. But when you have the vision, when you have opportunity, the vision of the Lord glory, when it comes to you, when you saw it, they don't need to, they don't need to, they don't need to push you around. You know what to do. Because that will give you the understanding of the journey. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the hand so the hand will not come until we preach this gospel to the four corners and that is why you see us on the Facebook that is why you see us on the social media so that this message will go to the four corners of place where we cannot be able to get to and the message of the cross will go beyond the borders that the people need to meet God for themselves people need to encounter God for themselves people need to be like prophet Isaiah that saw the vision of the throne of God and that is the only thing that will help them that will make their journey be easy. I encourage you this morning. Let me read verse, verse, 
verse, 6, verse 17 and 18. He said, let him, which is one of the house top, not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him, which is in the field, return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that would child. But pray. That is where I'm going to, and that is where the message of today will continue next week by the grace of God. Pray. Pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither one the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time. No, none ever shall be. So remember that day. Are you preparing for those days? Are you making yourself ready? The day is talking about the day of rapture. The rapture doesn't mean to be when the Lord blow the trumpet on the sky. When if you die today, that is the hell to your journey. Encounter God today. Seek God for yourself. See the throne of God. Have personal encounter. Meet with God. Surrender yourself to him. It's not about you going to church. It's about you having an encounter with God. God bless you. This is the message for you this morning. And I pray the Lord will explain it than I can do. And I speak into your life as you are going into this week. Every plan of enemy to slow you down comes to an end. I decree that the week will be the best week of your life. The glory of God will shine upon you. You will make it in this week. You will not fail. You will not die. Nothing will stop you. Your children will succeed. Your house will be blessed. God, I thank you for this morning. This is your message, Lord. You are speak it the way you want it to be. Lord, explain it more to your people. And bless it, back it up. I decree, if there's any problem that are going in our life this week, Cancel it. Every car that we want, we will climb on. We soak it in the blood of Jesus. We soak this new week in the blood of Jesus. Go and succeed. Next week, when you're coming back, you come back with testimony. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I speak into your life that the glory of God will shine upon you. You will see the goodness of God. And every day of your life, you will see the blessings of God. And this week, you will come back with testimony. I soak this week in the blood of Jesus. I soak our going out and coming in in the blood of Jesus. I soak everything that pertains us in the blood of Jesus. And I soak our vision, our, our journey into the blood of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And in Jesus' precious name we pray. People of God, this is the message coming to you from the Apostolic Church, Lona, South Africa, Pictorial Assembly. Please, if you want to be part of this house, see the number on the screen. Let's hear from you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you. You will never be the same. Share this program and invite someone today. If you have a prayer request, speak to us through the number on the screen. And if you want to give towards the things of God, speak to us through the number on the screen. God bless you and you will see the goodness of God. This week will be the best week of your life. Every plan to slow you down come to an end and you will succeed in Jesus' name. The Lord loves you and the Lord is your strength. Keep serving God. Keep believing. Open your heart to receive from God and the vision and the message of the end time that the Lord have deposited in you, proclaiming to the whole world. God bless you. As we close, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this hour. We bring in everything to close right now and the services still continue. Meet us and speak to us. Let this week be the best week of our life. We will not die before our time. We cancel every covenant of death over us, over our children, over our household. We destroy them and we set ourselves apart for glory. And let your name be glorified. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is great in Zion and is higher above all the people. The Lord is great in Zion and is higher above all the people. The Lord is great in Zion and is higher above all the people. The Lord is great in Zion and is higher above all the people. The Lord is great in Zion and is higher above all the people. The Lord is great in Zion and is higher above all the people. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. I'll see you next week by the grace of God and be good.
Remember, the Lord is ultimate. God bless you. Keep sharing this as we bring it to close. God bless you. See you again next week. By His grace. Keep God. Keep believing the word of God. The Lord of God will never fail in your life. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you.